PeteTools.com. G'day guys, Pete and Pete Tools, great to see you here again today. Hey, today I want to have a bit of a yarn about MIG liners, Benzel MIG liners. Do you need to buy a branded named MIG liner or can you use any sort of MIG liner? Or why the hell do you need a MIG liner in the first place? Anyway guys, same as usual, you like my video, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment. Come say good day at PeteTools.com and uh, I'll give you my thoughts on MIG liners guys. So guys, I don't know if you fellas are anything like me, I had my MIG welder probably six months and it was welding really, really good. I went out to the workshop one day, just started doing what I normally do, a couple of welded up a couple of dumpsters, and it's just started spitting and doing all sorts of horrible shit, and I thought to myself, what's going on here, Pete? Maybe my welder's crapping out, because it was only a cheap Chinese one, you know how it is. So I put up with that for two or three days, eh guys? Then I could feel in my torch when I was pushing the button and the wires coming out like so. I could feel it, it felt gritty. You could feel it going in the, in the sort of rattling in your, in your torch. So then I thought to solve that problem, guys, I'll just go and I'll screw it up a little bit on the tension on the drive rollers and push the wire through a bit more. And all that did was it caused a great big bird's nest inside my wire feeder and then I spent half the day untangling that and I thought, well, this sucks. So what's the problem? So anyway, long story short, guys, I figured out it was my MIG torch liner. MIG welding should be fun and easy guys like this. After I bought my first MIG and I got the hang of it, I was welding like this probably within two or three months. I thought, yeah, this is no worries at all, this is ideal. Easy to learn, you know, I can stick my shit together with it. Yee Pete, let's get into it. And then it started going like this. And after I changed the wire two or three times, putting your roll of wire on it, I'm using the big rolls of wire, the 15 kilo rolls of wire, and it started acting like this. So what the hell's wrong with this crap? What I did guys is I turned the power up, turned the wire speed up, see if that made any difference. Here, yeah, that's freaking going horrible, you can hear it going on, off, on, off. It doesn't even look right, see that guys? It's just um, what it's doing, you can feel it in the gun, it's going doo, 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 doo. Then I thought to myself, well, my welder's crapping out, because it was only a cheap Chinese one, and I thought, oh, well, that's what you get for buying cheap rubbish. But I've since changed my mind about that, because I've had this welder like for about eight years. So anyway, long story short guys, I pulled the liner out of it. So a lot of you guys already know how to do this, but a lot of you guys don't. You guys that are new to my channel and don't know much about MIG welding, same as I did eight years ago, you know, you learn as you go along. And I uh, wish I had someone here to just tell me the few tips and tricks along the way. It would have saved me a lot of grief anyway. It would have saved me a lot of pulling my hair out. Not that I've got any left, but pulling my hair out trying to weld properly when it was something really simple to fix. My welder has a Euro fitting on it, and uh, I'm just using the liners for a Euro fitting. But like I say, you can use any one you want. As long as it fits in your welder, it's no big drama. So here's my trusty MIG guys, 250 amps, just a Chinese inverter welder. Like I said, I thought it was burning out within the first six months because it wouldn't weld properly. But it was just the uh, MIG liner that I had to replace. Once I did that, it was like I just got it from the shop again and she was away. Yeehaw! Welding like a pro again in no time. So that's what I want you guys to understand, you guys that are new to this. That it's, um, it's not always a major drama to get your machine welding like new again. Sometimes the simplest and the cheapest things can get your machine up and running and you'll say, what the hell was I worried about in the first place? Anyway guys, so enough waffling and I'll show you how to do the same. So mine's a Euro fitting here, just like so. So I just undo it like that, out of the front of the machine. You may have a different fitting on this, but it's much the same principle, or either way. Pull them out like so, and I'll just pull it out, see the wire here? I'll just cut them off. Now I could pull that wire back through here and wire all it back in there, but I can't be bothered with that sort of thing, so i just cut it off. I'm prepared to lose, you know, a couple of metres of wire, it doesn't really bother me. So we'll just cut this one off here like so as well. Then what we're left with is my torch and the lead. So I've got my torch out of the machine, guys. This is about a three metre torch, so you have to know the length of your torch so you know what size liner to, to replace it with. But I mean, you can get a liner that's bigger than what your torch lead is, you just cut it off, it's no big drama at all. So what we need to do, guys, is... Um, this end here that screws onto your machine. Just take this little nut thing off like so. Then go to the other end of your torch like that. Take your nozzle off. Take your contact tip out like that. And I'd actually take the holder out as well. I just find it's easier. Like so. And what we're left with is where the holder screws in like that. 
Now, depending how damaged your liner is in here, guys, you may need a pair of pliers to pull that out, or you could be able to do it by hand. So I'll try and do it by hand, and we'll see. What you need to do is lay this out as flat as you can. So I've got it in a circle here so you guys can see. So just bear in mind, lay it out as flat as you can. Now just start to pull this out. You see that theory's not working for the simple reason that it's in a big coil. So what we need to do is stretch them out. So I'll lay it on the floor. So I've laid it on the floor out behind me. And see how easy that is to pull out now? It's because we've got it nice and nice and straight. You don't want to try and do it in a coil like I tried to do it because it won't work properly. Right, now this is your liner here, guys. Like I say, a lot of you guys will know that, but a lot of you guys also won't. And this is a steel liner. We're using steel wire with a copper coating on it I'm normally using. So we've got the liner out of the torch. And what happens, guys, is your wire runs through the middle of this liner like so. And as you can see, it looks like a big compressed spring and it just goes round and round and round like that. What happened with mine was I ran over the lead with the truck and what it did is it put a kink in this liner, like so. It kinked it, put a big kink in it like this. But I couldn't see it on the outside because it sprung back in the rubber. And then what happened was, trying to feed my wire through like so, if you imagine the wire coming up this way, gets to the kink and then it goes, when you push the button on your torch, it hits the kink and goes if you understand that, and that's what caused all my issues. And also, what I've found since then, is these liners here, especially the steel ones, they can get full of rust. If you use your welder quite often, they suggest that every coil of wire, well I'm using the big coils, but every coil of wire, you try and clean out this liner. I might do another video about cleaning out the liners actually, so you're buying a new one every time. But that's what happened to mine anyway. When I went to weld, of course, it wouldn't weld properly. And then, like I say, it took me two or three days to figure out what the hell the story was. And then, um, yeah, I was about to go and buy a new welder. But then I just, one of these, nine bucks or whatever the hell it costs, virtually nothing. And it was like I had a brand new machine again anyway, guys. So that's a trick for young fellows. And like I was saying, it doesn't matter what sort of liner you use, as long as it fits in your torch. And it doesn't matter what brand it is, I don't think so anyway. I just use your cheap generic ones like this. I'll put some links down below if you want to buy them. But they're not very expensive. You know, nine or ten bucks or something. But make sure you get one at least the same length, if not longer, than what your torch lead is, and like I say, you can always snip it off. I'll show you how to do that now, because we'll put the new liner in there. Also guys, when you're replacing these liners, make sure that you know what size wire you're using. Like this is 0.9, this is 9mm wire. So what I would do is, I'd get a liner. You see this liner here, guys? It goes between 0.8, I don't know if you can see that. It goes between 0.8 and 1mm. So if you get the right size liner for your wire, it's not slopping around in here and it doesn't sort of go and try and hit the edge of it and bounce all over the place and do all sorts of nasty stuff. And the whole object of this is to have this going through here as smooth as possible because that really, really affects the quality of your weld. And you can also get Teflon liners like this guys, which is the same as the steel one here. This is used for welding steel and this is used for welding aluminum. Uh, it's very, very slippery, you know what Teflon's like, it just slips and slides, you know, like when you fry an egg in your fry pan that's got a Teflon coating on it. Supposedly it's not supposed to stick your egg, well I can't cook anyway, my eggs stick to anything. But anyway, that's beside the point. So this is really, really slippery, so it's ideal for doing aluminium and that sort of thing, aluminium wire. Because you'll find that aluminium wire is really, really soft, so you don't want to be hitting anything inside this liner. It's got to have a smooth travel, otherwise, like I say, you're well to turn to shit, guys. So here's my old damaged liner guys, one with the kink in it, and this one's a red liner, and I'm replacing it with a blue liner here. A lot of the colours just correspond to the wire thickness that you're using through your liner, that's all. So just keep an eye out for that as well guys. So we'll get rid of this one Pete, get rid of him. Yep. Now we've got the new blue liner here. What we do now guys, is just do exactly the same thing but backwards. So make sure you've got your torch stretched out nicely, and then feed them in like this. And you should find that he'll go in there no worries at all. If it gets a little bit tight, just wiggle the other end of the torch lead. But the straighter you got it, the better. And um, yeah, you'll be amazed how much difference this makes to your welder, guys. It's absolutely incredible. So I'll just push them in here. It's getting a little bit tighter now, but it's all good. Push them home, just the last bit there. 
onto this little thing here and then put that screw back on again like we took off before like i say guys this is really simple to do make sure you put the screw back on like that so you got something that ends up looking like this grab the other end of your torch now if the liner is exactly the same length as your torch then it'll end up looking something like that you can see it right down there but if your liner is longer then you're going to have a piece sticking out here all you do just snip them off with your snippers no worries whatsoever and what I do is just put the contact tip holder back in there, just like so. Put the contact tip back in there. Just tweak them up a little bit. Put your diffuser back on. And then put your nozzle back on. Piece of cake guys. Now we'll go to the welder and we'll just reassemble them and run some wire through it and see if it actually welds. <laughs> so what we do here guys is just make sure this is cut off clean. You don't want any little burrs or anything on the end of it like that. Grab your torch fitting guys and put the wire in here. Turn them around until they snip and they're snug like that. Just do them up. So guys, all you do now is just push the button and wait for the wire to come through. When it gets close to the gun, you'll hear it going grrr, grrr, and you can just feel a little bit of vibration. Just means it's coming through. Won't be long. There you go. Beautiful. And there we have it, one big line of gun change, piece of weasels, eh? Yeah! Let's go and see if it welds, guys. Like I say, guys, I'm no expert welder, but little things like that can make a huge difference and save a hell of a lot of frustration. Anyway, guys, let's see if it works. There guys, don't look too bad, it even sounds a lot better. Just a little simple thing like that, like four or five bucks or whatever the hell it costs. Two fifths of bugger all. So guys, that's about it for this time. For what it was worth, that's my uh, ideas on the old liner for the old MIG welder. Anyway guys, same as usual, if you like my video, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment. Come say good day at peachtools.com and we'll see you next time, mate. Eh? Bye. Peachtools.com Peachtools.com Peachtools.com